Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a super fun multi-layered stencil flat shaker card using one of the newest stamp sets that Simon Says Stamp just released as part of their uh, February Be Creative release. I will have a link to the release in the description box below the video along with all the supplies etc etc. So I started with this vitamin C stamp set. It's super cute. I, I literally struggled like I wanted to stamp every single image and make you know 15 cards. Didn't have that much time in my day. <laughs> so I chose just a few images and I'm stamping them onto Simon's Smooth White cardstock with intense black ink, alcohol marker friendly ink. Stamping them a couple times because they're brand new stamps. Want to get a good crisp image. Once they're stamped, I am using my Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers. I have done several videos now coloring with these markers. I will have a link to the playlist that I set up with all those videos. That will be at the end of this video and then this one will get added to it. And I'll continue to add to it as I do videos with it uh, or with them right now this is this is real time coloring i don't color near as fast as the magic of video editing makes me look um yeah i'm enjoying these markers i use actually both the brush and the bullet nibs to color in these images i was just grabbing colors at random the one thing that i love i think the most about these is you grab one marker and you have the dark the medium and the light all in one love it i just I, it just Anything that, you know, means that I have to think a little bit less, I am here for. <laughs> but that said, I, people keep asking, like, well, how do these compare to Copics? One, one, I don't compare these to Copics. Um, Copics are just Copics. They're amazing. I love my Copics. I've done a bajillion videos showing Copic coloring because I've had them for 15 plus years. Love them. Love my Copics. These, though, I like these. I like them a lot. I'm really genuinely enjoying them and just having fun with them and use what works for you yeah you know and if you don't like coloring with alcohol markers at all thankfully i have tons of other videos doing like just die cutting or watercoloring or ink blending or you know all there's so many options and that's what i love about this hobby so i have now super sped up the coloring <laughs> and i just went to town with it i i just had fun these images are just cute so cute and I did my go-to as always I just go darkest to lightest when I color it's just what I've been doing for years now yeah yeah I'm starting to sound I really do sound like a broken record I feel like but that said I know not everyone watches every single video I wish you all would <laughs> but really really is what it is so after I colored my little mermaid, I colored little clownfish. And then for like the coral and the seaweed and whatnot, again, I'm just grabbing colors at random. I was like, ooh, purple's pretty. This sort of jade green blend is super pretty. Um, I'll use the magenta blend on the other little bits of coral or whatever they're supposed to be. You know, just cute, cute, fun colors. Can't go wrong. So... I just kept working my way around all of these little um, images to get all of the color added in. And then once I have all of the actual color added, um, these little dudes that are probably most likely like, you know, little clams or whatever. I did the, the ice blue blend on them because I didn't want them to be gray. I don't know. I was just like, it needs more color, just like it needs more cowbell. So anyway... <laughs> did all of that and then I used the the brown gray blend for these little rocks so added all of that in and then as I was doing this I was like should I add the dots yeah I quite enjoy doing this when coloring with um whether it's these or my Copics just adding little dots with like the darkest colors it just adds more texture. This is also a good way to, if you are not super happy with a blend you've done or whatever, um, adding little dots and little bits of texture just kind of softens the look and kind of takes the eye away from it. So I just do it because I like, I just like the texture it gives. It gives it a little extra something. So I just went around with basically the darkest shade of whatever section I had colored 
and added little dots with the exception of the little clams. I actually pulled out the blue turquoise blend and used that marker to add the little dots. And then I finished it off with my white gel pen. Again, not following any rhyme or reason when it comes to highlights, but same idea. Added little dots, added little highlights, all the fun things. And then I don't have the coordinating wafer die set yet. Um, so I fussy cut these. Didn't take very long. If I'd had the wafer dies, would have used them, but just is what it is. So I'd fussy cut them, set them aside. I grabbed a panel of um, A2 sized, another piece of Simon's Smooth White cardstock. And I have that gray piece underneath is one of the, it's just a cut down piece of the Tim Holtz Media Grip. And this just keeps my cardstock from sliding all over the place, which I love. And then I'm doing a super simple blend first. And I'm using the trio of positively saturated inks from Simon, the Seafoam Surf and Ocean, because obviously perfect. And I started with my lightest, which is a Seafoam, using my blending brush and blended that down like half the panel. And then I go into the medium color, which is Surf. I'm gonna blend that on and then I'll add the Ocean. And as always, my camera makes my blends look not as nice, but at the same time, it is, it's legit irrelevant because when I layer on the couple stencils, it don't matter. So that's always a nice thing too. And like I've always said too, your blends don't need to be perfect. One, perfection's always overrated. It's cards. And two, by the time you add like splatter, this, that, and the other thing, it's, it's just good. Don't, just don't stress about it. You know, just do it. So blend it on the ocean color, cleaned off my glass mat. Once that was cleaned off, I pulled out a couple of oldie but goodie stencils. These have been out for ages. I don't even remember. the This Waves one has been out for literal ever. Um, they're still available. This time I actually checked. <laughs> because sometimes I forget. But anyway, I used a bit of pixie tape to tape down the ink blended panel. And then I have what will be the inside of my card base. So top folding A2 white note card. And I used my little piece of post-it tape to mask off where the fold is on the card base. And then I used a couple more pieces of pixie tape to hold down the stencil because this waves stencil, um, you can either do it like this, or if you are, if you're really struggling with the, the, the pieces of the stencil kind of moving, um, some pixie spray works really well. I wasn't too worried about it with this. And I'm also, you can see how I'm like kind of dragging my blending brush in the direction of the stencil. Because if I was going to do like the normal circular motion, that's just going to make all those little pieces move and then you're defeating the purpose. You're not going to actually get the stenciled look. So I just drag the ink across and I'm going in the same um, order as I did the ink blending. I'm just applying the ink a little heavier and then by dragging it across like this, it does apply it. So I'll get that waves look, which I just love. Like, look at that. Love it. So I did the sea foam first and I'm going to add the surf and then I'll go in with that ocean ink and um, as like whatever ink is left on the brush, I kind of also kind of keep working my way up a little bit just to get a little bit more of that wave definition because this is just a beautiful stencil. So after I've applied all of the color here, I'm going to take this off that background get that just out of the way and then I'm just going to shift the stencil over onto what will be the inside of my card there's already you know ink sitting on the stencil there's still some ink in my brush I've shown this in many videos I'm not going to re-ink the brush like I'm not going to put the brush into any of the ink pads because I don't need to because I just want this to be really really light so I'm basically just dragging the ink that's on the stencil onto the cardstock and again just kind of dragging it in the direction of these waves so that they're not shifting and moving around and then after i've done that once i peel the stencil off you guys will totally see what i'm doing see oh, love love so then i'm going to do a second stencil you could skip this there's all sorts of options i i go a little extra with this <laughs> so again i just i use the pixie tape again to hold the cardstock in place this is the What's the name of this stencil? I had it sitting here. This is the polka dot party stencil. You could do many ways with this. You could um, just apply white pigment ink. That would look really cute. You could apply this glitz glitter gel as is. That That's the first one I opened. That is Gina K glitz glitter gel. Amazing, love it, chef's kiss. My container is old. It is, I've had it for 
at least two years, probably longer. Um, it is sealed with press and seal. I'll have a link to that as well. Press and seal does help preserve your jars, even ones like this, because glitter pastes more than anything do dry out quicker. Pastes are not infallible. They do dry out. They are not going to last forever, even if you seal them. That's just not the nature of the product. However, I can make most of my paste last a ridiculous amount of time. Even that glitz glitter gel with that great big opening, I've used it a bunch of times. It is not quite solid. I've thinned it out with other products and it's still like, it's almost gelatinous. <laughs> so I did a video several weeks ago and I'll link to that one as well at the end of this video at the end screen where I mixed these two paste together and I actually added like shimmer powder to it and like made it insanely bright magenta. Oh, it was fun. So this paste that I'm stirring up currently, this is some Picket Fence Studios Paper Glitz. It's called Sparkle. And I'm stirring it up right now because this paste is like liquid. I don't like the liquid consistency, but this mixed with the Glitz Glitter Gel is like, it's like the, I'm like Goldilocks. One is too thick, one is too thin. So I'm going to make it perfect. <laughs> so I stirred it up really well to like, distribute the the mica in the, the paper glitz and it gets all the shimmer mixed up and then I took some of the glitz glitter gel stuck it on my work surface here and then I'm going to take up this mixed up glitz and you can see like it's just liquid but when you mix them together it's like oh and then I get two kinds of sparkle because the paper glitz is a mica sparkle fabulous and the Gina K is like a glitter sparkle you know but again you could use just one <laughs> or you could use white pigment ink or you could skip the second stencil altogether but I just I like mucking around it's fun so I just kept mixing these until I got the consistency I was happy with and um this will get a little bit more transparent as it dries not a lot because just between the amount of shimmer and sparkle and glitter and everything in them, um, it won't go full shimmer. The only way it was if there was like, if I use like a transparent, if you want to make your paste, whatever it is, more transparent, you could add just a clear, there's different clear paste on the market, um, like a gloss paste, whatever. Or if you really wanted to, uh, I wonder if you added glossy accents to it. I'm going to stop there. No, I'm not going to give anyone too many ideas because you never know that might turn into a disaster, but that it's, it's possible. It's just got me thinking. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm carefully applying this in just a very thin layer over the stencil, regardless of um, what stencil you're using or anything. When you're using like a, a thinner consistency, like what I've created here, you don't want to like press on it you don't want to reef on it and really press because it whatever it is you're applying you could end up pushing it under the stencil and then making a mess ask me how I know this so I just applied it in a thin just nice thin layer put the excess back into just the paper glitz jar because that I consider this this is like my my mixer you know I just I'll add this to other paste and it's good to go so love it so once I'm done I immediately remove the stencil and I take that and my palette knife and I go wash it if you don't wash them immediately put them in a container with like hot soapy water something because glitter gels like glitter paste of any brand that stuff will dry like cement it is not fun to try and like scrape it off or anything but if you put it in a container of like hot soapy water or clean it immediately you're good to go so i did that i let the, this dry so you can see it doesn't go like fully transparent but that's perfect because they're shimmery another extra step I added splatter because I could <laughs> so I just used some white uh, Amsterdam white liquid um, acrylic paint and put that on a uh, acrylic block stuck that in my splat box splattered that with my fan brush let that dry again and then I'm going to trim this down I was first going to do this as like a full shaker card so the four and a quarter by five and a half and then decided to trim this down to like three and three quarters by five yeah um, just because the images that I'm using are a little bit smaller and then the card base will kind of mat it. And then as an extra, 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 extra step, <laughs> I decided to make it a flat shaker because I was like, why not go big or go home? Let's just have fun with this. So I took some packaging. I have done a ton of videos making flat shakers. I have another playlist for that as well. I will have that linked at the end of this video. 
yeah, I'll have the the Flat Shaker playlist, the Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend playlist, and then the video that I was mucking around making my own magenta glitter paste. So those will be all at the end of this video if you guys have missed any of that. So most of my flat shakers, more often than not, I just reuse packaging, packaging that, you know, products come in, that, you know, stamp sets come in or cardstock, whatever. I save it and then I can use it to make flat shakers. So all I've done is I trim down a piece bigger than this panel. I flip the panel over onto it. And then you wanna use a, just a good strong adhesive, preferably one like this, like a tape adhesive, cause liquid adhesive, you're gonna be here forever waiting for that to dry. Just nope, nope. Simon's Terrific Tape works wonders. Score Tape works, Redline Tape, anything like that that just is good and strong. So you seal up the three sides like I showed. You leave the fourth side open so you can add the shaker bits. For that, I am using, a, I, I, I made my own custom mix again. <laughs> I have the uh, new Lucky Charm sequin mix. I thought these would be cute because there's, you know, aquas and some greens and whatnot in there. And then I added some Studio Cadia crystal discs just because they're beautiful. So I mixed those together in my little triangle tray, dump those in and then sealed off that fourth side. And then I just flip this over and I trim off the bits be uh, that when you fold over all the four sides, the corners hang over the edges. So I just trim those off with my scissors and then I've got my shaker just like so. Um, off camera, I ended up stamping and coloring another one of the images from that little vitamin C stamp set just to fill in this panel along the bottom so I colored it the same way as everything else same colors everything and I'm going to adhere these to the front of this with that uh, terrific tape from Simon because again good strong adhesive you can again use something like glossy accents etc I've shown that it depends on what I'm adhering if it's like a sentiment or something more often than not I'll use like glossy accents but these were thankfully big enough I can just use the terrific tape and it just adheres really well another option is something like this which is little foam squares because I adhered the little rock and coral bits with the terrific tape and then my little mermaid and my little fishy I popped up with just thin foam squares from Simon and it gives it just a tiny bit of dimension and they're just so cute they're just so cute they're having a little conversation so and I love because all the sequins are kind of hid behind these images that's why I chose to put them on the outside rather than adhering them to the panel and making the whole thing like a shaker and then I took one of the little sentiments there's a bunch of punny cute little sentiments in the set and I stamped the best fishes with that ocean ink so the darkest ink quickly just trim that out with my scissors and again, easiest way to adhere this, I just folded a piece of that terrific tape in half, like lengthwise, stuck that to the back of it, and then just kind of tucked this in, tucked it in amongst the, the coral and the seaweed there. So once that was in place, I'm going to take another sentiment from this set. I'm going to line that up on an acrylic block. Um, this sentiment says, all you need is a good dose of vitamin C. <laughs> and it's like S-E-A again. I love the punny sentiments. So line that up and I'm going to stamp that onto the inside of the card with that same ocean ink. And after I did that, I was like, hmm. I was just looking at it. I was like, the inside needs just one more thing. So I stamped another little um, clownfish from the set onto a scrap of cardstock, colored it with the same markers, everything, trimmed it out. And then I just, I stuck him, stuck him right there. You know, he's he's on his way to join the little party. So stuck that on the inside. I will fold my card clothes, reinforce that fold with my bone folder. And then to adhere the flat shaker panel to the card, you can use the terrific tape. It works great. I use score tape just because I've got these thicker, like wider widths of it. This is like the one inch score tape. And I've mentioned this before. I have, I have literally every width of score tape, of course. So I have tons of it. So this is convenient. So I just put three pieces on the back, just like so. Once those are in place, I can peel off the backing and then adhere this to my card base. Once this is adhered to my card base, this card is complete and it's adorable and I love it and I had loads of fun. Where it's right behind me. Here it is. So it's got it all its little shaker bits and you can you can hear the little shaker bits. There's something about shaker cards. Like you can just sit here, you know, and play with them. Super fun. So like I said, shakers, 
dual layered stencils, coloring, embellishment, all the fun things. I This was fun. I will have links, as always, below the video. I will link to the new release. I will link to my supply list, my blog post. All of that info will be in the description box below the video. I'll have the links to the other video and playlist that I mentioned at the very end here that you guys can check out if you're interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos. Thumbs up, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. Very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.